Hello and welcome to the Deluxe Lab. Our topic today is making life occupancy data a standard, insights from Swedish public transit. We at Deluxe have been working in the field of passenger flow in public transit for a long time. And I'm very happy to talk to one of my own customers today from the Scandinavian market. In fact, my guest Thomas Jonsson is our first Swedish guest in the Deluxe Lab, and he is from the Jönköping region, which is located in the south of Sweden. The biggest city is also called Jönköping and is located near the lake Vettern, which is the second largest lake in Sweden. The region has around 300 buses, and in fact, all city buses are already electric. So, I would assume there is a lot going on right now in public transit. And I'm really curious to listen from Thomas what he has planned. Thomas is a senior system administrator for Jönköping Lands Traffic, or short JLT, which is the regional transport network. So in the next 30 minutes, we will talk about how Thomas drives change through data in the Jönköping region. And this is a topic Thomas is very passionate about, and may I add, so am I. So I'm really glad to have you here, Thomas. Welcome to the Deluxe Lab. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So Thomas, at uh, JLT, I already said you have 300 buses, which are driving over 20 million kilometers a year. So in other words, that around 500 times around the equator. So, so really a big, big number and impressive for a small region in Sweden. So I would like to know how popular and common is it for people in Jönköping to rather take the bus instead of the car? Yes, well, I, I, I don't know for exactly that number. I couldn't say uh, that uh, completely to you, but I, I can say that um, that we have uh, expanded a lot uh, and I um, we have expanded about 30% of the traffic and um, it is it is common to use uh, the public transport and the buses and the trains that we have. So, um, well, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's common, but I couldn't give you a percentage <laughs> of that. Um, but we are working very hard to get larger uh, numbers of um, uh, parts of the traffic in, in the public transport sector. So, and we are in, in a special time now that I think that we really can increase for, for many reasons. Uh, and um, um, as you said, we are we try to do it. Uh, we, we try to make the traffic interesting for people to use in many different ways. In, in expand it, of course, and also have good, good um, technology and uh, electric buses. So it's in, uh, environmental, and it's also cheaper today <laughs> than with uh, high high gas prices. So why not use the bus? Yeah, this is for sure adding uh, another reason why public transport is for sure attractive and important to not only meet uh, the uh, sustainability goals, but also uh, for your position in particular um, with your IT background and uh, your, yeah, I would say, still fairly fresh view on uh, the public transport business. This is uh, very interesting also from a, a German perspective where we discuss a lot around the German so-called Verkehrswende, so transforming public transport and making it more attractive to use public transport or active mobility instead of your private car. So with your new and fresh and passionate perspective on public transit in at JLT, how far would you say is the digital transformation already? Um, yeah, we are on the way of, of going uh, digital uh, to uh, move from uh, analog to a digital uh, tr public transport as much as possible. But 
exactly we are i think we're some some somewhat in the beginning uh, but um um, it's um, it's something that you have to do. I think you have to go uh, uh, into this this um, this way. There's no other way of doing it. There's no other way of doing uh, most of the things today. Actually, I think um, so. We want to collect good data as much as possible uh, uh, from different areas and uh, handle that data as good as possible. Also, with different uh, systems and. Uh, ways and also maybe more in the future than automate functions based on that uh, where you come into ai and things like that where we maybe not so much today even though it's a lot of talk about it but may, but in reality maybe not so far away so today we are going uh, we are working very very much with the collecting the data uh, so that is that is something that we we are um, working really hard on um, and also having some kind of you, you maybe you heard of like data warehouse you collect all the data in one place and you're able to do um, um, business business intelligence use these numbers together and so on I think that's a really important area for us to not just it's easy many wants to collect data but Okay, so you have a lot of data everywhere, but <laughs> what are you going to do with it? You need to do intelligent things and, and good decisions based on that. So, so um, well, we are in the beginning, I think, but I think there is a lot of possibilities and very, very interesting to to see what you can do. Um, so, um, well, um, sky's the limit. I think there is a lot of things to um, to figure out both what people really, really want and want uh, as a traveler. What, you, what, what information do you need? And uh, mm -hmm. also for those who are developing the traffic, how they can develop it in the best way possible. Uh, so there is a lot of different ways that we look at this. Yeah, and you've uh, already come a long way, haven't you? So, um, I mean, now that we talk about your data strategy um, and we'll tap into a bit more like what you actually do with the data and further usages. I, my personal perspective on this topic is also, um, especially with the COVID pandemic recently, we have seen in a massive increase, not only in terms of uh, data insights or the need for data insights, not only from um, the communities or yourselves, but also from passenger side. And at the same time, I think the overall stakeholder group has increased as well. So I don't know if you experienced the same thing, but um, the insights you just mentioned, and we will uh, look at this a bit closer just in a second, I think have not only uh, the travel planning aspect, but also all operational improvements for your services, for your fleet, and last but not least, uh, it's also essential to meet the sustainability goals, right? So public transport yeah. is the backbone. And uh, with the relevant and accurate data you are generating, um, I summarized this is the key what you are focusing on, right? Yeah, sure. And I, I, I have to say first also, I'm new in public transport. I've been many years in IT and different uh, areas, but mainly in IT since since my school years. And um, but for public transport, I'm new. So so I don't know all the uh, all the, you know, those who are uh, into public transport for half their lives or so on. They, they know much more about the business, of course, than I do. Uh, but I want to um, uh, I want to use the technology because I work with the technology in the buses. So I want that technology to really be the greatest possible tool for the business. Uh, yeah, so, um, so it's a lot of different areas, sure. So it's a lot of different areas that we need. It's, I don't know all of them <laughs> like this, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, again, I think it's wonderful that you have this fresh perspective. And um, when we look at this and your current setting at JLT. So uh, you have a deluxe solution. So that means hardware and software that you are using to collect yeah. passenger counting data. And um, let's just start with the hardware aspect or the basics first. How are you working with the APC solution right now? And what do you get out of it? Maybe this is something uh, for our audience to yeah, elaborate a little bit on. So uh, 
how are you currently using this? Well, it, it's quite it's quite recently that we got all the buses installed. Actually, we have a few. I don't know what you say in English, reserve or spare buses, some extra buses that mm -hmm. we we don't have fully uh, installed actually, and we use uh, predictions from Deluxe in in those buses. So that, that's a good that's a good way not to have some empty buses basically with no data, uh, but. For the first period, we looked at uh, as uh, you know the installation part because it's a lot of things with that also when you come to buses with electricity going up and down and door signals and uh, it's not uh, it's not like other e IT equipment. It's a lot of things to think about. So we are uh, uh, we have uh, um, been working a lot. Or with that and also the reports to look at the reports and compare them and that we want to do that even more of course but we are in the beginning uh, comparing uh, the DLAX data with for example the passenger ticket data uh, how many tickets were bought we know that but how many actually were on the bus uh, so we compare those kind of data and get some information so and you know so in the beginning the first step I think for us is this and then and to show, uh, like I do, for example, myself, when I go with the train, I look at, uh, at my mobile app and look at how many they think is on this train. Uh, so I maybe take a later train and so on. So that kind of thing and wheelchair place if there is availability for those who are disabled, for example. So that's things that we will have to look into and a lot more maybe <laughs> that I'm not aware of right now. But uh, so um, yeah. um, and um, uh, everyone is interested to get this data. Um, also that we have two sources, like the tickets is a very good source, of course, but we know that about maybe 10% are not paying for the tickets. Uh, we, we, we have this information since, since before and think, think it's about that. So we need to s look at that also and what happened during Corona now, uh, did, did behavior change a lot, for example, and, and things like that. And um, of course, um, um, every stop, bus stop, where how to use bus stops and, and remove and change and make new ones and things like that, which is not my area, but <laughs> I will give them information so they can really, uh, the, the system can produce good information to take uh, better decisions. Um, so um, um, so th there's a lot of information there, of course, yes. And maybe let's just highlight, uh, we keep talking about data and data insights and reports and all sorts of mm. analysis that you can do with APC data and other types of data like ticketing data that you just mentioned. But still, uh, one thing is really important to me and that is not to forget the accuracy. So you yeah, mentioned yeah. ticket data is a valid source to evaluate, okay, uh, where have people not paid for a ride or where might we send inspectors for checking if there are some, yeah, well, let's say uh, differences in the numbers. And um, yet again, the accuracy that is provided and will be provided in 100% uh, of your buses will come from APC technology. And um, this technology was invented to only serve this purpose. So with a certified accuracy of up to 99%, uh, I mean, you coming from IT and everyone with the technology background, I think knows that this is almost the best numbers that you can get and uh, basing decisions at the end of the day on data that is that accurate is a source that we, yeah, cannot uh, stress more and I hope especially for you mentioned it um, the inclusive mobility aspect is another well aspect that is often neglected especially when let's say only looking at ticket sales right so even though you might know how many wheelchairs users or even other user groups with uh, disabilities or other priorities such as uh, people with a baby buggy, they are yeah, needed and they want to use public transport. And with your solution that you will use in um, your shopping area, 
you will certainly get those numbers. And uh, this is something I'm personally really looking forward to, to see further analysis and improvements for those user groups. So bottom line, to foster inclusive mobility, to make public transport more accessible, more uh, interesting, also from the planning perspective for those user groups, but overall for all passengers with the valid information that you get. So, um, as, I, as we already said, you are not only using the hardware that is installed in 100% of your buses, but you will also use um, an analytics platform called Deluxe Citizens. And this is in place since last year, so still fairly new. And we usually uh, recommend to start with basic analysis, with basic reports, and then build up your expertise from there. And having somebody like you on board with this uh, brilliant background, uh, we already looked at certain reports. And I would really like to know, since you started working with the analytics, what has changed for you and for your business? And what have you learned since then when working with APC data in more depth? Yeah, it's, it's fairly new, so we haven't gone into depth yet, but we are very happy to have, uh, I think we have, we have some reports of hardware where we can, at the beginning, for example, we need to, we need to make sure that, uh, that um, things in the buses like door signals are working, that the setup is right. And then we have this report, like a report from citizens where we, we look at um, the, the quality of the data that sometimes the buses are wrongly installed or thing set up that we have made uh, or the installation firm have made something some some mistake or so so we all always want to keep this on track uh, so that's one report that we have used uh, and, and it's a really good one actually i, I like it and um, um and then we have the, the um, the more business reports where where you come to travel so so i don't remember the old um, the names of those where but we have four reports um one with line for different lines uh line number one and know exactly about that one and the different and um, we have four trips also for each separate trip and we also have um, uh, data for each stop and time so we can see during the day where uh, uh, the where, where uh, the larger number of people are traveling for example uh, and how many and so on during the day and these are the four reports that we are using uh, we have not been um, gone so much into those yet we are uh, yet comparing very much with the with the um, with the ticket data, we had have we have had some problems with the ticket data or problems, but it's not been you know we need some something to to rely that on, and we can go into the bus and count manually. <laughs> that would be a hard time, uh, but this will be uh, something where we can lean back to and, and and look at the numbers, which is really good for us. So uh, we look forward to look more deep deeply into all these reports. And we will use them for many, many, many things, um, and also compare them with the, the crowd insights from from mobile uh, data, for example. Also, that's something that we will look into maybe. On um, yeah, so there are many, many, many areas. Um, but uh, so hardware and yeah, some of the business we have been looking. Uh, we are fairly new. And most of uh, is from 2022 that we've been looking at the reports. We're looking before, but now uh, with some delays in, in installations. And so, um, so that's yeah where we are right now. Yeah, but I, I have no worries uh, about your way forward. And uh, especially once you have the vision and the data strategy set, uh, we at Deluxe, uh, I mean, <laughs> we have several discussions on this already, Thomas. Uh, yeah. We can navigate you through the jungle and um, happy to support you here. And uh, just to one thing that you just mentioned on um, the crowding information that yeah. you can display with uh, the data that you generate, I think 
this has become, yeah, um, I would even say a must have, especially due to the pandemic and is maybe even to last, especially to attract passengers back to public transport um, and maybe change existing habits again um, from yeah, really choosing, actively choosing public transport again, when you have all the insights and the full transparency. For instance, I have seen a great example right in the beginning of the pandemic from another Swedish customer that they made occupancy information available to the public uh, on the website with a traffic light indicator to sign is uh, the certain vehicle crowded, half crowded or more or less empty. So this information, I think, is really helpful and is, uh, yeah, more important these days than ever. And still, um, I think it's good. And once again, to say, start with the operational insights you get from APC data, improve your internal processes, fleet planning, maybe um, you said the um, analytics, um, is something you are currently looking at and then as a second step involve passenger information or making it public to to the public yeah yeah and uh, and i don't i don't know exactly um, when it, i mean first we need to uh, we take it a little bit slow uh, because uh, we want to make it really really make sure that all the details are, are uh, perfect i mean the equipment i think is good it's working perfect but in the bus there is uh, coming from from another <laughs> side which is not public transport it's very it's very important to see that there is a moving bus with electricity which is so different than in in the in the wall basically uh, and you need to have uh, it's easy, I think, for us in public transport, especially in the business where you're not IT technician or electrician like I, I was trained. Uh, you don't think about those questions. Just it should work, you know, like that. And I think that, well, equipment works if you have a good solid ground for them to work. So you need good electric electricity, you need good connections and good things in the bus. So mm -hmm. for us, that is a, is a very important thing also. You cannot just blame the technology itself. You need to be very, very good at what you're doing to uh, make the right decisions also about the equipment. Uh, so we, I have seen that we have had some difficulties with some things and based uh, basically on signals inside the bus. Or, you know, we have old buses, you don't have all, all, all buses are not perfectly new, for example, and you have different models with different signals, standing door signals, uh, um, electricity is um, 24 voltage plus when it's open, and another one has 24 voltage when it's closed, and it's, you need to fix these things. And so it's a lot of things to think about, but yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah. And once again, I think te technology can really help us to improve this and not have a vague guess where something is not working, but rather work with tools like remote access and monitoring, uh, yeah, where you yeah. directly see from your laptop at home or in, if you're in the office uh, where something is working or maybe interrupted to um, yeah, get help wherever needed. But still, it's a very robust technology and I'm sure um, it will be successful. So yeah. still, um, I would like to highlight that you have a unique setting or not a unique, but um, an astonishing setting. You will equip all your buses, so 100% with this technology. And this is uh, special in so far that some other customers uh, also for money reasons, obviously tend to only equip a fraction of their fleet with APC technology and then make use of something that is called extrapolation. You mentioned it in the beginning with a projection, but that is more to project data for future scenarios or make more or less recommendations for the future. And here, what we see from a partial equipment to a full equipment is um, calculated with extrapolation. And uh, this helps you now to bridge the gap between a partial equipment and a full equipment. And yet uh, to get those numbers uh, from a partial equipment uh, 
scaled up to full capacity is really helpful to to understand what's really going on in your network even though this data is more or less yeah calculated by our algorithms it's you will see and you will compare the data later on yeah. it will be fairly accurate so um that's really something worth highlighting that you are at full speed with this technology and yeah. With this being said, you are now working towards life occupancy prediction available for passengers in the future. So I would like to know uh, what advantage do you see for life occupancy prediction in the future? And where do you see there are benefits uh, for sharing information with the public? Yeah, first I would say I think extrapolation or you, what you said is that what we have uh, tried on a few buses where the installation is, uh, I used a different word uh, when I said projection, I mean, I meant that, that uh, they... Absolutely. So, yeah, and uh, well, I think it's good to have in all the buses. I think, of course, there are reasons not to use maybe uh, price, uh, you know, you, you don't have the money for that. But I think it's very good to have because it's... Uh, it's kind of a basic uh, information in the bus, kind of, you know. Uh, I mean, it's about the travelers. If you have a lot of buses, no travelers, so <laughs> why do you run the buses? You need travelers, so it's very good to know how many and where do they come into the bus and where do they leave. Uh, I think that's a very, very in interesting um, uh, data. So for us, that is uh, that has been very interesting and, and we, we need that. Uh, the advantage, um, and um, um, I think that at the first uh, first glimpse, I mean, the first idea is that we need to, to show passengers, uh, like you said, a projection of, I mean, before that, usually on Monday evening, this is what the, the setup is usually like eight o'clock, it's very crowded, seven o'clock, it's not crowded or so. And that kind of information is really good and I use it myself. I think it's uh, it's very good because now when I will leave here, I will go with the bus, like a train actually, and I will look exactly at that. Uh, and I will maybe change one train from uh, sh switch to another because of how crowded it is. Is a lot of students, for example, <laughs> during some period. So it's a little bit noisy and I want to work in the train. So um, that's a really good advantage. And as we have so said before, uh, to repeat again, it's like wheelchairs and, and those kind of things. And maybe other things also like uh, strollers or, or for children and things like that. To, to That is a possibility also to show. And I think even though maybe that's not the largest uh, group or so, but that's not... Uh, I think what we're working is not all about money, it's about helping the public and, and be a really good source for everybody, disabled as not disabled. So I think that's an important thing actually for us also. Um, and uh, yeah, it's hard to, to know exactly. I think we need to start with that and, and see where we're, go where we're going. But it's it's really interesting. I, I think this is very very interesting, uh, and, uh, and and I think to 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 take this data together with crowdsourcing from the mobile uh, is how people are moving outside the traveling. So we have everything about the buses going in from Deluxe, and we have from the mobile devices where people are moving in the society. So we can use this together in a very good way to see. Uh, predict what, where is a good place to have a bus stop, for example, and things like that. So we, the future is uh, looking bright in this area, at least. Brilliant. I can't wait to be back in your tripping. <laughs> and yeah, it I, will I, take I, a while. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, let's see. Let's see. Um, so from what you say, I hear mainly three things. Two for passengers, that is trust and convenience for their improved planning. And third, for you to also better plan your services and uh, make it profitable, uh, interesting and convenient to use eventually. So I think it all comes together quite nicely. Um, and I really love to hear your ideas uh, and your plans for your shopping in the future. So looking even a little further into the future, what would you say is your vision for 
the usage of data at JLT for public transit? Yeah, that is definitely data mining and AI things. Uh, I, 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 I can't say too much about that because I don't know, but I think that definitely we need when we have, I mean, it's not large amount of data if you compare to to the internet and so on. But when you look at these uh, large number, when you come to a couple of years, five years, and you have data for many years, you can do some some interesting data. I think you can use this data in very interesting ways, and it can be difficult for a human being to understand everything. So then it will be very interesting to automate this with intelligence uh, and, uh, and and exactly. But that, that's what I, I want to see. And I hope that we'll have the um, suppliers that are um, um, and, and new people maybe in the school right now training in these areas that want to develop good tools for this so uh, and maybe there are already that we can use so th this is in a uh, very interesting area of course uh, and data mailing to find you know structures in the data and so on so so yeah um exactly how that will be used i don't know i don't know <laughs> but uh, but um, for sure, a lot of data is difficult for one human to 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 himself try to understand all that. We can see this as a bus stop. Many are not. Nobody's using it. Remove that stop and so on. But that's simple things. But we can come to more trends in the data later on. And uh, I think we can find things between this data and other data that we have and draw conclusions uh, from that. So I hope that we we uh, we can have a very interesting future yeah and statistics from from many other sources so not just uh, DLAX and crowdsourcing but uh, uh, crossing uh, uh, crowd insights but other insights also uh, but exactly what it will be I don't know <laughs> but there is uh, there's a lot of work to do be done here yeah, yeah. Of, so yeah yeah great and uh, yeah from what I hear I think, First and foremost, it's also up to management or to the leaders to decide if or not you should commit on a data driven strategy and uh, really commit on working and generating this data. And for that, clearly, you need people, right? So uh, BI analyst, you need people who can translate the data and the insights. Uh, to really operational use at the end of the day. And uh, that's what you were an expert on. And that's what I think globally we are all yeah, searching for. So young talents, uh, or not necessarily young, but in general talents yeah. that are eager to work towards the goals that we uh, are already talking about. And I think making public transport again um, yeah, a company or uh, an employer that is really actively working to towards sustainability goals, towards a purpose-driven uh, company that is changing our lives in cities and regions. I think this is uh, one of the best reasons to get up in the morning and go to work. If you ask me, that's why I'm here. And so yeah. are you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, still this commitment, uh, I, I, I don't know if you agree, but I think it has to come from the top and also from politicians to really say we invest, we uh, care and we demand this information. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, um... Uh, I um, when it comes to the future, and uh, it's a little bit difficult, but as you said, they, you need to, it's both these that the management need to set a, a way of, of where to go. But for me, it's also about giving them the data, because sometimes in organizations, they don't have the data, they don't know how to use it. So I will provide, so this is the data you can have, and give a little bit of ID also, you can do this and this and this, and try to get their mind going. It's like, imagine, just yeah, imagine it's a process. what you can do. It's a process. Yeah, it's a process yeah. uh, ju just imagine what you what do you want to do what where do you want the travelers to go and and have a little bit of more of i think uh, take a lead in 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 uh, this area but as i'm a, I, I feel like a beginner not just working uh, one and a half years with this so um, so uh, but 
I think that we need to get pe more people traveling with the bus or, and train, of course. And um, one thing that we talked about, maybe not about DLAX specifically, but um, is that we, for example, to show a passenger maybe how much less environmental imprint they do when they go with a bus or train than if they took the same trip with a car to give them some idea just to mentally see the picture because you don't think about it but you need to think about it sometimes to make okay that it's i'm doing a big change now so because if one people is taking the train it doesn't matter but if 10,000 people does it, then it actually makes a change. So so that kind of movement, you know, and I think compassion for public transport is, is also important because it's like, I don't know in other countries, but here it can be a little bit boring. It's like, you don't think it's, it's a gray area. I think we need colors. <laughs> we need to think about uh, it in a different way, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. what you just said, what reasons may be to uh, take public transport instead of the car. I was recently asked a very interesting question, and I like to ask our audience to check uh, and take this as a homework as well. So the question was, you, when you look up a certain journey, if, or if you want to go from A to B, and you think the car is the fastest way, honestly, check your Google Maps or public transport app and type in point A, point B in there. And uh, that person said, whenever he asked that question in a, in a round, he got astonishing results and they were mostly in favor of public transport. So it, in his little survey, it took the same amount of time with public transport, uh, then with the car and with the footprint that you mentioned and the um, gas prices recently, I think we have even more arguments to use public transport. So uh, if you have any feedback for us, dear audience, please let us know. <laughs> I would be curious yeah. if you have the same results. And also, um, Thomas, uh, one, one more question on the impact that we already talk about. So what would you say is the impact on the general public for using public transport in the whole Yun shopping region? Uh, so if it's not only about data collection, but the insights that you will generate, um, do you think the impact could be that when you say this critical mess, is reached, um, services will be more flexible or more often or faster. Do you think there are ideas from, from the public that will be created once we really push public transport even more in the future and if your vision came true? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But one thing that we didn't mention is open data that we present this openly for people to use. So there are and we have had some actually from the schools, for example, it could be anyone. And, and some people contact us sometimes and say, well, where's your data? We can use do some app or something. And I think that's brilliant. I, I like more people to use the data and have open data. So it's not uh, it's a possibility for them to develop new things and so on. And we, we have a little bit of, of stretch there because we all of it is not open. But but many, mm -hmm. many things are yet. So um, I think we can do a good a good impact because uh, we we need to have data, show it to people, and present it in a good way, uh, and uh, make it public and open, <laughs> public data. Maybe we should say <laughs> open data, public data instead in public transport, but um, for 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 usage. So um, uh, it could impact a lot. Um, I mean, you can develop new things. Um, I think that's one thing that we see in other IT areas that make it open to everyone. There is someone just popping up and using it. Um, because if you just keep it for yourself, it will be narrow and, and closed up and only you imagine some program. But instead, everyone can do it and you can learn from that one. Just 
grab you like programming code i'm a programmer but i didn't do it for a long time but a little bit and uh, web developer and you you grab a lot of code from everyone you know like take that and that's that that's how you learn quickly if you need to learn everything by the book you, it will take ages to do things so so um yeah, and why not make use of standards that is uh, yeah. commonly used by oh, everyone? Yeah. I mean, we see this in the UK, for instance, with the Bus yeah. Open Data Service uh, Act that is, yeah, making a standard for all operators to provide the same set of data in the same format to be used for further developments and also for sharing, comparing, yeah. benchmarking, uh, yeah. so whatever. And still, um, I mean, this is a little bit critical, I would say, but uh, my wish would be to also see more public-private partnerships or at least collaborations in the future yeah. when we also see that e-scooters and other micro-mobility solutions are now flooding cities. At least this is true for Berlin. And um, I would really like to see more and be it in the beginning sandboxes to just try and share the data that public transport is generating with those suppliers and improve, let's say, um, not connected dots where micro mobility can really bridge the gap and uh, make the overall experience in cities and uh, getting from A to B more convenient and yeah, attractive. So yeah, I think yeah, your approach yeah. is absolutely perfect. And uh, <laughs> we are really looking forward to using your data more in the future. And who knows which collaboration or ideas you will come up with. So um, exactly, You're, there's a, you could talk forever about this, I think. Um, you can talk forever about all these things. And, and standards is a, a, a subject for itself, itself almost, but it's very important when you when we at to talk the same language basically and understand each other and um, yeah and scooters you said and uh, carpools and there's a lot of things that you can mix and you can do uh, great things and uh, yeah interesting really interesting and self-drive vehicles I, I don't know I, I you know this uh, oh yeah when, <laughs> this, when we touch that topic yeah. this will be another yeah. hour I guess <laughs> yeah yeah I think so so, uh, so yeah yeah but that's that's for sure to come in the near future and just to draw a line under what we discussed, I think it's fair to say data is often taken for granted, but uh, you have to start somewhere. And with the solution, in your case, you get the APC solution from Deluxe with its analytics, which is uh, very good. And I really like working with you to see your changes. This can really help companies and um, public transport providers like yourself to not only fulfill the criteria and get forward work with the insights you generate uh, to improve fleet planning, your operational efficiency, but also to the wider public and uh, get passengers back on public transport, especially now after all the changes and the interruptions we experienced in our everyday life, right? From working yeah. from home, more flexibility, changed um, yeah, needs, maybe even changed priorities, how to move around cities. And I think uh, we both agree that only the insights from accurate data, the data that you get from our solutions enriched with your further analysis and insights uh, can serve this purpose. Sounds almost too good to be true, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but, but that's certainly I would say the first step and I'm glad I can help you with this and we are very curious to see your next step. So maybe we will have another case study with you and see where you are in one year time. So dear audience, I think uh, Jörn Schöping is definitely worth having a look at and the changes that they are implementing. And thank you so much, Thomas, for being yeah. my guest today for sharing you. uh, your energy with us and all the insights. And also thank you to you, dear audience, for watching today. It's been a pleasure. And if you like to, and if you haven't done so so far, please follow us on LinkedIn. And if you are also interested in the next Deluxe Lab, this will take place April 28th. So stay tuned for more information. And in case you have any questions or 
ideas, recommendations, please get in touch via webinar at deluxe.com. And last but not least, thank you, Thomas, once again. Thank you all for watching and I wish you a nice afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.